I shall want to begin this lesson by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Shemin Hoshah, Waha Rakak with us, which in the ancient Hebrew tongue would be the correct names of the Heavenly Father, His beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit. Also, would like to give double honors to my teachers, the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much due honors and respect to the sensitive brethren out there that is also laboring in his work. And as always, want to say Shalom to the believers, you know, the Akim as well as the Aqua, which will be you brothers along with the sisters that subscribe to this truth as well. So, yeah, I just wanted to go into another quick lesson, you know, pretty much continuing in the theme of spotlighting, if you will, those amongst you out there who would be considered guilty of perverting the gospel of our Lord, Yahweh Shah, which will make you a heretic, you know, meaning you're teaching things not in harmony with the scriptures and pretty much contrary to the doctrine of our Lord, Yahweh Shah. And one of those many wayward ideas, if you will, would be the so-called Latin tribes not being numbered amongst the nation of Israel which that's a, a source of information that comes from these Negro-only based Israelites, which when you teach that idea, you're actually frustrating the spirit of our Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. You know? The scriptures tell you that whatever the Lord joins or bring together, let no man cut asunder. Which when you read the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, around the 12th verse, it tells you how the Lord would join Judah and his companions with Israel and his companions, meaning once more the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom would reunite. And that would happen right here in America, which would be a marvelous, beautiful piece of work of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah, man. All right? So when you teach the idea of the land tribes not being numbered amongst the children of Israel, pretty much you are turning away the poor. <laughs> you know? You are presenting the idea to a people who have been robbed and spoiled which, by the way, by the same common enemy, the so-called white man, were pretty much, in essence, you're telling them that they have no inheritance. Matter of fact, um, let me start off real quick with that. In the book of Isaiah, the 58th chapter, in the 7th verse, it says, Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? Let's read this again. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? Yeah, and that bread is symbolic to this truth. And who is the hungry? The nation of Israel, which consists of not only the so-called Negroes, but the Latin tribes as well. Case in point, when you consider, you know, the so-called Puerto Ricans, which would be the tribe of Ephraim, all the way down to the so-called Mexicans, which would be the tribe of Ishaka. Well, they're all hungry, man. <laughs> you know? Meaning they're looking for answers. Case in point, when you consider, you know, Ephraim, you know, these... Uh, so-called Puerto Ricans, you know, in these Latin tribes, they enter the, you know, Catholic Church. You know, they show reverence to uh, Mother Mary. You know, they have rosaries all over the place. Even down to the so-called Mexicans, you know, which would be the tribe of Ishaka, they heavily into Christianity. Well, this means they're hungry, man, meaning they have a zeal for the Most High, but not according to knowledge, see? So by you having this information, it's your duty to deal that bread, you know, or this truth to the hungry. Let's read it again. It says, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? See? And that thou bring the poor that are cast out into thy house. Yeah, in this house, meaning, you know, the house of Israel. The Latin tribes are, are the poor as well, man. And it's your duty, and, and I'm speaking to you self-proclaimed leaders out there and those amongst you who exclude the uh, Latin tribes. Let's read this again. It says, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. Yeah, because they are a part of this household, you know? See? It says, when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him. Yeah, and the naked is not only the so-called Negro, all right, which to be naked is to not know your nationality, you know, to, to uh, align yourself with these corporate names, such as, you know, so-called Negroes and uh, African-Americans and colors. Well, guess what? When you consider the land tribes, they associate themselves with these corporate names as well. <laughs> you know, uh, Mexicans and Puerto Ricans, 
you know, and Cubans. See that? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Let's read this again. And that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Yeah, when you say that the so-called land tribes are not numbered amongst the children of Israel, that's a form of you hiding yourself from your own flesh, man. See that? So the Latin tribes are Israelites indeed. And through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi Shah, we're going to uh, show you that in this lesson, which brings me to a little information I want to share from Wikipedia, right? And it reads the Chicano movement, all right? The Chicano movement. Now, when you read into it, it says the Chicano movement of the 1960s, also called the Chicano Civil Rights Movement. See? Let's read this again. The Chicano Movement of the 1960s, also called the Chicano Civil Rights Movement. Now, this Chicano Movement is a Latin movement, which happened in the 1960s. But it was also known as the Ch uh, uh, Chicano Civil Rights Movement. Do that sound familiar? So that proves around the same time, you know, where you had the so-called Negroes crying out against the injustice, if you will, of the so-called white man, was simultaneously you had the Latin tribes crying out, man. And that was a fulfillment of uh, Ezekiel, the 37 chapter, the Valley of the Dry Bones, where it tells you how the bones came together and they, and they began to rattle and make noise. All right, in the 60s, you know, going into the 70s, that's when Jake started to cry out, man. Okay? And what you're going to find out, it wasn't only uh, the so-called Negroes. See? And this is not a coincidence that these two movements were simultaneously, see? So again, the Chicano movement of the 1960s, also called the Chicano Civil Rights Movement, was a civil rights movement, see? Extending the Mexican-American Civil Rights Movement of the 1960s. Now, when you consider the so-called Mexicans, you have a lot of tribes that scattered amongst the Mexicans. You know, a lot of these so-called Mexicans that come through the border from South America, Central America, well, a lot of those so-called Mexicans are actually of the tribe of Manasseh, man, you know, and, and uh, Asher, you know, and Neptali, see? So this uh, Mexican-American civil rights movement was framed as a Mexican movement, but it was actually a, a mixture of all the northern tribes. See that? It says, was a civil rights movement extending the Mexican-American civil rights movement of the 1960s with the stated goal of achieving Mexican-American empowerment similar to the Black Power Movement. See? <laughs> similar to the Black Power Movement. See that? And that's actually biblical prophecy. Real quick, this is the book of Jeremiah, the 50th and the 33rd verse. It says, Thus said the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. Yeah, let's read this again. It says, Thus said the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel, which is symbolic to the northern kingdom, the so-called Latin tribes, and the children of Judah, which is the southern kingdom, you know, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, headed by the so-called Negroes, were oppressed together. So when was this prophecy right here fulfilled? Because when you go into the history, which that's another thing, these self-proclaimed teachers out there amongst Israel, they don't have a feel for history, man. You know, especially in relation to the different captivities of Israel. Well, when you go into the split, all right, when the nation was split up into two different kingdoms, you had the southern kingdom, all right, which went into captivity under the ancient Babylonians, and you had the northern kingdom who went into captivity under King Shalmaneser V and the Assyrian captivity, man. So when the scriptures say, thus said the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together, that prophecy was fulfilled right here on the soils of America, all right? Because you have not only the so-called Negroes, you know, here, catching hell in America, Babylon the Great, you know, being racially profiled, you know, pulled over and shot down by the cops. But this plagues the Latin tribes as well. You know, Ephraim all the way down to Issachar, man. As well as the natives. You know, when you go up into the Northwest, Seattle, Washington, and Portland, Oregon, there's plenty of cases of Gad, 
you know, being shot and killed by cops, man. You know, unarmed so-called Native Americans. You know, they're on these reservations, which is equivalent to these barrios and projects and ghettos, man. See? So we're all in, in, in this captivity together with one common enemy, see? So when you go back to this information right here in Wikipedia, which again reads Mexican-American Civil Rights Movement of the 1960s with the stated goal of achieving Mexican-American empowerment similar to the Black Power Movement. So again, it's no coincidence that you had, you know, uh, this uprising you know, by the Black Panthers and these different so-called uh, black empowerment groups in effort to combat the injustice, if you will, of the so-called white man. Well, it's not a coincidence. Simultaneously, you had the Chicano movement, you know, at, at the very same time, see, which was spearheaded by this brother right here, Cesar Chavez, you know, it's a picture of him with demonstrators. And again, this was uh, parallel with the time of uh, the so-called Negro uprising of the 1960s and 70s, man. See? It says, uh, location mainly in the southwestern United States caused by racism in the United States. See that? Racism in the United States. So the so-called Negroes wasn't the only ones victim of the hatred of the so-called white man in the form of racism, man. See? This was also geared towards the so-called land tribes to this very day. See that? It's caused by racism in the United States. See? So again, for all you self-proclaimed leaders out there amongst Israel who are not willing to budge from this hard stance concerning the so-called land tribes not being numbered amongst the nation of Israel, well, this information right here should be an eye-opener, you know, which, you know, we don't expect the majority of you people out there to have the mental capacity <laughs> to retain this type of information because really it all goes back to the fact that either the spirit has rested upon you or not. And surely if you're viewing things through spiritual lenses, then if nothing else, you will come to the conclusion that this is reasonable doubt right here, you know. This is cause for you to take a step back and consider. You know, this is if you are reasonable, you know, and, and you are viewing things through the spirit, all right. You have uh, two different people, which the scriptures outline Israel was split into two kingdoms with one common enemy, you know. They share the same struggles, all right? They're all being uh, oppressed and, and under the subjection of one system. See that? So if you are uh, open-minded, all right, surely you will consider this. And if anything, you'll say, well, this people here could certainly be Israelites as well, all right? Which brings me to the book of St. John, the 10th chapter, and starting at the 15th verse, it says, As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And these are the words of our Lord, Yahushua. And the sheep would be the children of Israel, the nation of Israel. All right? Which when you read up in this chapter, the Lord said he was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, starting with the elect. Now, when you consider the elect, there's 12,000, you know, chosen Elect members, those who are destined to see, and predestined, should I say, to see the salvation of our Lord, Yahweh from each tribe. All right? So again, it says, as the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. This is concerning the elect, because only the elect benefited from the blood of our Lord, Yahweh Now, ultimately, the uh, nation of Israel in its entirety is going to benefit, but they're going to benefit from the elect, see, which they're going to be regenerated through the elect, and this is where wisdom is needed, you know, in relation to uh, being able to digest the concept of reincarnation, all right, verse 16, and other sheep I have, see, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, let's read this again, it says, and other sheep I have, 
which are not of this fold. Now, when you go into the history, our Lord Yahusha was sent to Judea. You know, uh, at that time you had Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, man, predominantly. You know, the rest of the tribes was pretty much on this side of the world. Now you had certain of the northern tribe, you know, a remnant of the northern tribe that was scattered throughout, um, you know, that region at that time. Um, when you consider the prophet is Anna, all right? I think she was from uh, the tribe of Asher, if I'm not mistaken. So you had uh, a remnant, if you will, of the northern tribe, but for the most part, when our Lord Yahweh was on the scene, he was dealing with the southern kingdom. See that? That's why he made this statement right here. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. And that was dealing with the northern tribe, man. See? Them also, see? Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. Yeah, you have uh, uh, brothers out there of uh, uh, so-called Mexican, uh, Native American descent, all right, that hear the voice. When they heard this doctrine, it resonated with them. See? Again, it says, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, see? And there shall be one fold, see, and one shepherd, meaning the Lord is going to join these two kingdoms which were split up, see? Let's prove that real quick in the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. In the 12th verse, it says, Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus said the Lord Power, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves, see, and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, meaning out of this dead state. See that? And shall put my spirit in you. Yeah, that's symbolic to this understanding. And ye shall live. That's why uh, this word is known as living waters. See that? And I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, said the Lord. See? The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah, see, and for the children of Israel, and his companions. So this is uh, dealing with the southern tribe, right? It says, then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, which is uh, symbolic to the northern tribe. All right? And for all the house of Israel, his companions. See? And join them one, see? And join them one to another into one stick. And they shall become one in thine hand. And who is that hand? That's symbolic to Yahweh Shah. So Yahweh Shah has joined us together, which is symbolic to this word. We're all gathered by this word. No matter what uh, respective tribe we come from, we was all gathered by this word, which is Yahweh Shah. See? Matter of fact, let me get that real quick in the book of uh, Baruch. The fifth chapter, in the fifth verse, it says, Arise, O Jerusalem. And stand on high and look about toward the east. And behold, thy children gathered, see, from the west unto the east by the word of the Holy One. See, we was gathered by this word, see. It says, by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the remembrance of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. See that? So that's what you're witnessing right now, which is a very beautiful piece of work. You know, by our Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. And the fact that here in this captivity, which this proves this is the last captivity for the nation of Israel. You know, and the fact that the Lord brought the tribes together once more. All right? As in the days of old. You know, which when you go into the house of David, all the tribes was in, in harmony. You know, all the tribe was together in the time of King David. So that's why the elect is known as the house of David. And the house of David is not going to consist of so-called Negroes only, man. All right? So, you know, you guys out there that teach that idea, you need to polish up your game, man. Study, you know. Or, or if not, you're going to be destroyed. 
Because you're going to be found guilty of being a heretic, man, and perverting the gospel. Which we all know that that's a, a capital punishment in the eyes of our Lord, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, So, yeah, I just want to touch on that, Lord willing, it was edifying. Till the next time I say, Shalom.